Okay, hello campers, happy camping all. Hip Fab and Groovy One Pot Wonders, how are you doing today? What I'm doing today is a one pot chilli. Absolutely brilliant. For this, now I, I have boiled these before. On one of my previous vlogs I was talking about rices. And I showed you when I was making my kedgeri, if you haven't, check that out on YouTube. And on Vine. I was talking about microwave rice, which is dead easy to cook with, and it doesn't take up much space. But I also love boiling the bird rice, and this is boiling the bird rice. You can prepare this before you can, as long as you keep it in a cool box. Remember, you've got to be able to keep everything at a nice temperature. If you've got a fridge, a camping fridge, or what have you, that is brilliant as well. I've got an electric cool box, and I will be talking about the sort of appliances and, and uh, fittings and things, equipment that you can take with you in later blogs. So keep posting, okay? This is boiling the bird rice, ready cooked, ready to go as it is. So, what we're doing now, I'm going to be doing my one pot chilli and for this you need a tin of coin beef, a tin of kidney beans, a tin of chopped tomatoes, some boiling the bag rice, some onions and some chilli powder. Simple as. This is going to take literally 10 minutes. So, switch on your gas, making sure that it is on. Yeah. I cooked once, it wasn't on as they go. Any minute now, it'll kick up. So, you can have this as spicy or as mild as you like. I don't like it too spicy. I'm not a lover of spicy food. I'm a lover of food, passionate about flavours and textures and everything else. But I just don't see the point in having something so hot that it's going to burn your earlobes off, you know? doesn't do it for me, but hey ho, maybe I'm strange. So, for this, you put in, you cover the base of your pan, which you've already um, prepared with a, a thin greasing of uh, olive oil or vegetable oil, keeping it protected. In there, you first put in your onions. Okay. Always cook the onions first. The reason being is that these are the ones that take the longest to cook. And in that, you add salt. Try the other end. If it's got a bit damp, that's better. And what I do, but unfortunately, because I'm in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere and I forgot to bring it, is some sugar. And what I normally do with onions, I get some of those little sachets when you only go for a cup of tea or go to Costa or what have you and you get the sachets. I always have a couple which I haven't got with me today. Huh? I have to go and replenish my stock. And I always get the, the a couple of those and I put it in. Why do I put sugar in with it? It brings out flavour and at the end of the day this food, especially when you're camping, it's about flavour. Now you could be there going, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you could be going on and on and on about what's this one going on about, you know, I've got drunk, I'm going off, I'm doing whatever. That's fine, you know, that's, that's do whatever rocks your boat. I'm just talking about the cooking that makes me happy and is easy to do, doesn't take very long, so your holiday is not maligned by you slaving over a hot stove. It tastes wonderful and it's easy to clean up afterwards because what do you do? You don't put it on a, bit, a serving plate. You put this in the middle of your, your, your table once it's cooked. Give it a ladle and you ladle it out. Serve it with bread, absolutely gorgeous. So, you just wait now for the onions to really cook. And the best way to do that is by always putting on a lid. Okay, a minute and a half in, the onions are now cooking really, really well. So, first thing you do is you put in your chilli powder. Before you add anything else, add the chilli. Let's take the lid off, makes it easier. So I'm putting in that much. This is mild chilli powder, so with it being mild, I love the colour that chilli powder brings to food. It is oh, just so miraculous. There we go. So now, now another thing that you can do, I use this a lot. This is um, garlic powder. Now, one to use than granules because it automatically 
dissolves into your food. So if you're looking, you don't need to be faffing around with garlics or anything like that, you know, chopping garlics and then looking at everything. You just literally just put a teaspoon of that in is the equivalent to having a clove, all right? So you mix that around. Now some people don't like putting garlic in with chilli, it's optional. I do, I like it. I think it brings out so many flavours, it's wonderful. Then you add in your corned beef. Now remember, because you've used water, there's a lot of fat in corned beef, but you haven't got a cooking fridge. You haven't, you've got limited space. You want to do a meaty meal, tin of corned beef. It doesn't even take, it even counts its own little, great little key. You can get some now, which you can lift off, or very easy to go around. But it doesn't take any space at all. And once you've used it, bish bash bosh, goes right in the water, you know, in, in the, uh, you're recycling. And I do recycle when I go camping. I always have one for tins, one for paper, one for glasses or, you know, plastic bottles, what have you. Because, you know, it's up to us really to continue with that vein. It, it, a lot of camping sites you go to now, they also have the recycling centres and stuff. So, you know, don't, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy campers. As you can see now, and now the meat, and as I say, because this is already cooked, you're only heating it through. Then you add to it. Now, one thing that I do often like, and I haven't actually got any with me today because um, it's the middle of the afternoon, because if I open it up, I have to carry on. I sometimes like to put a little, you know, half a glass of red wine, or maybe a full glass, or maybe the bottle, depending how I want to go with it. Port goes lovely in this as well. If you're doing something with winter warmer at Christmas time, get you know, that's a port, shove it in the middle of it. Absolutely divine. Just brings out a different flavour to it. Then, right at the end, you add your chopped tomatoes. Again, everything comes in a tin now, it's easy. Chopped tomatoes, you can't beat it. You haven't got to faff around. And again, unfortunately, because we were in the middle of a field and we <laughs> hadn't brought our tin opener, so I had to use the old fashioned butterfly one, which I always keep as an emergency. But the ones that you can get, lift off again. So always try and look at the things which are easier, like so, to lift off, because it makes your life a lot easier as well. So now, give this another whiz was round. Now, now that is, oh God, that is just smelling great. Absolutely wonderful. So, you put the lid on, and for three minutes, you let that cook. Actually, with the lid on, I only took a minute and a half to cook this through. So now, what you do, stir it round from the edges. And don't, don't vigorously do it, because what you're doing is you're bruising the beans, and you don't want to do that. The beans are the best part. I'm crazy about any type of beans, harrogate beans, black-eyed black beans, blah. So now, it's a bit windy here at the moment, you get your boiled of bag rice, and you just literally pile it in like so. There's one. Now, this is enough here for a family of four to five. This will feed them easily. So, you know, again, now you're just doing this. The rice, as I said before, is already cooked. So now you fold the mixture in. Okay, so now I've cooked this through. It's been on here for about, I reckon about three minutes. Let's lift off the lid and see what it looks like. And there you go. To make it even nicer, you serve this straight from the pan. And what you do, or at least what I do, oh, not the cheese, is you get your cheese, sprinkle it on top, take that straight to your table, like so. Thank you.
One pot chili, pink, fab and groovy. Okay, one of the things I can easily do with, this, with a variation of this chili, if you don't want to use rice and you want to use tortilla wraps, okay? A lot of people are like, oh God, tortillas, how am I going to heat them up? One of the things about my lid here, it's got an inch, if you can see that, depth. The reason being is in here, you can heat things up. So what you do, you get your tortilla and you can just lay it like so. A couple of seconds. I'll get two on here. And you just lay them on. That's all you do. Let that go on. Let the heat, because this is really hot. This bit here, that is as hot as hell. Just fill it onto there. Two seconds later, just bring it over. To heat them through. Like so. And it's up to you, it's how hot you want them to be. I mean, I'm doing this quickly to show you. And, you know, really it should be singularly done. Like so. And you can tell when they're cooking, because they start to shrink down. Give it a quick twist round again. Let the heat permeate. And that's how it all heats up. And then that, literally, Take your tortilla, put it on the middle, then take your lid off, and then you can just use that as well at the same time. Wait, the beans? Yeah, the beans. Don't worry about it. Put hers in your chest. Look nice. Ooh! Got you, nice? you got a nice from Kyle. That's amazing. I make these for kids, you know. Another thing you can do, you can do a tortilla stuff, you get that inside your bowl like so. You get your chilli, nice and thick now. Put it in the middle, like that. You can add in tomato sauce, sour cream, push it round. And then you have a very easy to eat tortilla parcel. Say it with me, hip fab and groovy. Hip fab and groovy. Hip, fab and groovy. <laughs> there you go.